Ladies and gentlemen, boys, and uh, <laughs> girls, welcome to episode 59, sounds right, of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I am currently in Tasmania, we're at the Airbnb, we just arrived, I'm here with uh, the incredibly talented cameraman I'm bringing on tour with me, Mr. Mike. Uh, North Borders, if you want to check him out on Instagram, he's gone out to the Botanical Gardens to film some drone footage, because he's brought a fucking drone, because it's just overkill on this vlog, but you know what, it's going to be great. I'm not even calling it a vlog. I hate vlogs. There's, at no point, will I, in, during this whole tour thing that we're putting out, there's going to be like four, maybe five episodes, and at no point will I selfie record myself. I refuse to do it. I'm never going to do that shit. You can do it on a phone. If you do it in a vlog, cancer. Not into it. But you know what? I'm, I'm probably going to do that at some point in my career. So maybe I should... You know what? I just don't... I'm, I'm not a fan. I'm not the biggest fan of it. All right? So we flew over to Tassie in the morning uh, from Melbourne to Tasmania. And the flight was so quick. I was just sitting in the chair. I, I sat down in the chair and I started listening to my own show in Geelong just to make sure that I could remember the feeling of it and go through all of the words in my own head so I could, you know, make sure I didn't forget anything. This is important to listen to yourself. As annoying as it is, you got to do it. Um, and I was listening to my show and then the show finished and then we landed. It was crazy. It was such a short flight. It was like just a little bit over an hour. So I don't know. It was cool. Um, man, Hobart's nice. I landed in Hobart and we drove, we got an Uber from the airport to the place where we're staying. And you know what? I found the best fucking saying. I found the best saying. Because as you guys know, I don't like talking to people that I don't know. I mean, I talk to you guys after shows. I like that. But if I don't... Like, if you're the Uber driver, if you're the pizza delivery man, if you're the... What else is there? The massage therapist. I don't want to talk to you. I want, I want us... To have as limited interaction as possible. If you're the pizza man, you go, hello, that will be $20, here's your pizza, goodbye. That's perfect. If you're the Uber driver, hi, where would you like to go? All right, would you like some mints? No? Cool. Silence for 20 minutes, that's what I want. And I've figured out the best phrase because the Uber driver is the hardest one, especially when you're coming from an airport because they always go, Oh, where did you come from? Why are you here? What are you doing? Oh, you're a comedian. Let's talk about that for 20 minutes. Can you tell me a joke? No, fuck off, all right? I'll tell you a joke if you give me this ride for free. How about that? All right? But I figured out the best saying. The best shit ever. I tried it out today, and it's perfect. I really got to recommend this to you guys, all right? So, I get in the Uber. Me and Mike sit down. Two young dudes, got a whole bunch of equipment with us. Probably the Uber driver's thinking, fuck, these guys look a little bit in interesting. Why are they in Tasmania with a whole bunch of gear? What are they doing? They look like they're on tour. And he goes, hey, so uh, why are you in Hobart? And you know what I went? I went, oh, I'm just traveling for business, mate. Boom, fucking wrecked, traveling for business. There's nothing you can say to that. And he was, and you know what he did? He was like, oh, okay, silence for half an hour, the whole ride, traveling for business. That's the best shit ever. I'm going to say that even when I'm in Melbourne. I live in Melbourne. Oh, where are you off to, mate? Just traveling for business. That's the, see, I always heard that in movies and I was like, that's such a strange thing to say. But you know why people say it? Because it makes the other person shut the fuck up. I'm just going to start saying that all the time. In every situation. Right, I'll get to the cafe. And I'll be like, hey, can I have a cappuccino? And they'll be like, oh, yep. Yeah. So how was your day? Oh, I'm just traveling for business. Boom! Fucking wreck. Don't talk to me. <laughs> I hope the neighbors can't hear me. The, 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 house is, the houses are so close to each other. But I really recommend saying traveling for business. If they come in and they tell me that I'm yelling too much, I'm going to go, oh, sorry, mate. I'm just traveling for business. Wrecked! Silence! Although, what if they came in and then they told me that they were traveling for business? Then I'd have to stop. Dude, if someone came in and told me they were traveling for business, I'd have to end the podcast right now. 
That'd be it. <laughs> That's just the rules. If someone says traveling business, I'm traveling for business, you have to be silent. I mean, I've only tried it once, but you know, so far it's had a 100% success rate. Dude, my theory of people in small towns being nicer and better people is really coming together. We got to, we got to the Airbnb and the owners are not here. We haven't met them, but they gave us like, uh, they were like, oh, we left the key in the blue door next to the step. So we get there and we go to the blue door, but the problem is the, there was a blue door. So we went to the blue door, we opened it and it was just a garage. It was not an apartment at all. It was just an empty garage. And we're like, surely we're not staying here. And then we're trying to figure out where it is. We can't find the key. We're, we're like, this is definitely a blue door. It's definitely next to the steps. And then the neighbors from across the street. So not like the next door neighbors, the neighbors from across the street. That's not even really neighbors. I have people who live across the street from me and we don't even smile at each other when we walk past. <laughs> we don't even give the, ah, you live in me street nod. We don't even have the street nod going on, right? So in Melbourne, we don't have a street nod, but in Hobart, if you live on the other side of the road, they'll come over and help strangers get into an Airbnb. If I was running an Airbnb out of my house, I guarantee you my neighbors would call the police. How can we stop this? Fuck their hustle. But yeah, so they came over and they're like, oh, are you here for the Airbnb? Like, yeah. And they go, oh, we'll show you where it is. I'm like, oh, okay. And turns out it was just up the stairs. We didn't go. We thought we had to go. It was next to the stairs. It was up the stairs and then left. Excuse me. I need my fucking inhaler. The, the weather is so different here. It's like a lot colder. Whenever the, whenever the weather changes rapidly, it fucks my asthma for some reason. I don't know why. Excuse me. I need to have my inhaler. <sighs> I swear to God, I will never do a podcast that is more than one take. I turn it on, I go, I turn it off, it's done, all right? You want better than that? Go listen to fucking Serial or some heavily edited shit. I'm not bagging Serial. I'm sure it's a great podcast, but that is, uh, uh, this is not a great podcast. <laughs> so yeah, we get in there, me and Mike, and uh, we go up the stairs and we've got all our luggage with all the, the t-shirts, that uh, all the tour merchandise and shit in it <clears throat> and um literally the first thing that i do as soon as the neighbors leave us once we found the door the first fucking thing i do is slam this is an accident is i slam my luggage into a massive pot plant pot and then it cr it falls over so i push it into the door it falls over cracks open and spills water like a fuck load of water it would have been at like four liters of water directly in the front door <laughs> and that's the first thing we do when we arrive so i have a feeling that this is just going to be the day of catastrophes i haven't done the show yet but we'll see what happens when i do the show i'll let you know next week what happens after the show but yeah it was just we couldn't even have a look at the house there was fucking water everywhere like i'm not even kidding let me have a look i don't think it, because i used all of the paper towels cleaning it up Every single one. Like, listen to this. This is the toilet, the, the paper towel roll. Empty. And there's, and I'm just having a look. Yeah, it's, there's fucking, it's still everywhere. It's a stone floor. So, luckily, luckily there's not carpet. Although the mat, yeah, the mat is still soaked. It's fucking everywhere. I hope they don't notice. Because not only have we flooded their house, but we also broke a massive pot. And by we, I mean 100% totally me that was all my effort but we didn't know what to do so what <laughs> what we did you'll see it in the in the the tour video um i just took the two pieces of the pot and i put them back into a pot shape and then i rolled it down a hill into the garden so that it looked like the wind blew it into the garden and that's where it broke and hopefully they won't notice right until after they've given me five stars on airbnb i don't know how i have such a good rating on airbnb you guys know that i trash these places i either trash them on purpose because it's funny for snapchat or they get trashed because i'm an idiot <laughs> it's so disrespectful um 
All right. I also, last episode, I asked you guys, um, how would you kill yourself in the library? And you really delivered. I picked the three best ones, but I had I had heaps of emails. So here's, here's my three favorites of how you would kill yourself in a library. <clears throat> Uh, G'day Lewis, Marcel here. I decided the best way to kill yourself in a library is by making many different small lacerations on your body using pages from books. Ah, so paper cut yourself to death. Uh, using uh, small lacerations on your body using the pages in the many books you will find in a library until you bleed out. Marcel, that's very, very good. That's, that's uh, you know, that's definitely a way to kill yourself. It's not the most efficient way. Um, we're looking for the most efficient, like you're listening to miscellaneous bit at the end in the library. You need to get it done quick. I mean, by the time you make another enough paper cuts in your body, miscellaneous bit at the end might be over. So that is a good way to kill yourself in the library. It is definitely a way, but I don't think it's the best way. So here's, um, method number two. Um, okay. Many libraries have computers in them and they can be used to choke oneself or to hang oneself. Oh, using the cord. But the best way is to find out how many scissors, knives, forks, or other pieces of metal you can stick down a turned-on electrical socket at one time. One for each finger. Who will volunteer? I'm sure many will after listening to fucking Miss Lady's Bit at the End. But I don't get... But I don't get what is so bad about Miss Bit at the End. That shit doesn't give me cancer. You do, Lewis. (laughs) You shit fuck. You end your life, I'll end mine. All right, let's go to the library and stick forks into the electrical sockets. Okay, so that really, I'll be honest, I only read half of that email before I put it in the podcast. Didn't read the end. So that really wasn't much of a method. That was just, hey, Lewis, you suck. So appreciate you, mate. Um, Now the third option. Let's see if this is the best one. I think it is. You just ask a librarian for a pen, sit down, shove it up your nose, and then slam it down onto a hard surface. With luck, you'll lobotomize yourself. Love your work, keep it up. Yeah, I think that's the way to do it, right? So you go, you just get a pen, and then you whack your head on the table. Bam, retarded. <laughs> you're either dead or you're retarded. So it's, it's, a, good, it's a good option. Sorry if the, um, the sound quality isn't the best on this one, guys. I am recording it on my phone. Um, but you know what? The last few times I've done that when I've been on tour, you guys haven't complained at all. So I think I'm just going to do that because the microphone's so fucking heavy to take. And, you know, my, my luggage is usually filled with T-shirts and shit and posters that I sign. So it's like, uh, I don't know if I want to bring the microphone... Man, luggage is so expensive and I don't fucking get it because as you guys know, I've been hitting the gym. I'm trying to put on weight. At the moment, I weigh 77. So I have been putting on weight since the live podcast, but not enough really. Like my goal was 80 before the tour. I'm currently on show three. So look, I want to get to 80 before Melbourne. That's my new goal, 80 before Melbourne because those are the biggest shows. So if I'm not 80... Um, what am I going to do? Nothing, right? I'll just tell you that I'm not 80 and you can all email me saying that I'm a failure, but that's the goal, right? I want to get to 80. Um, yes, but that's what I was saying. So I'm 77 kilos and this whole carry on luggage is bullshit, man. Like I'm so much lighter than most of the fat cunts that were on that airplane. There were at least five people that were like a hundred kilos, like full on overweight. Why do they get 30 kilos extra for free? And I have to, I have to like leave my podcast microphone at home because then it'll put me half a kilo over the fucking 20 that I paid extra for. Dude, even after I purchase 20 extra fucking kilos, I'm still lighter than these fatties who are true, who are carrying all that shit for free. It's not fair. It's not fair. You know what they should do? This is what, this is what airlines should do. They should have you, when you're buying a ticket, you should put in your weight range and it should be like five kilo difference. So not many people are going to put on or lose five kilos, right? And what you do is you go, I want to get a flight to Melbourne and I weigh 77 kilos. So you're within the 75 to 80 kilo market. And then they can go, right, because you only weigh 77 kilos, you get to take 20 kilos for free, and if you would like anything more than that, you'll have to pay for it. Fair enough. They should do the average fucking weight of a human. And if you are a fatty, if you're a fat fuck, 
what happens there, right? Because my one makes sense, but if you're a fatty, should you get charged more? Yeah. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, if you're a fatty, you just... You, I don't know. This is just, just going nowhere. It's just not funny. <laughs> All right, yeah, but I was, yeah, I was talking about gym, like I'm, I want to be 80 before Melbourne, but I'm struggling on when I'm going to go to gym, because I, at the, recently I've been going three times a week, and I want to do that for a few, uh, a couple more months, until I'm fit enough to go five days a week, like Monday to Friday, <clears throat> but I'm, I don't know when I'm going to go to gym when I'm on tour, but I, I can't really make it three times, because most days I'm on tour Friday, Saturday, right, so... I was thinking like I could do Tuesday and then Thursday, but then I can't go Saturday because I would have a show, I'd be in a different city. So I think I can only really go twice a week while I'm on tour, unless I figure out where a gym is in every city and then figure out if they let you in as a once off and pay the fee. It's such a fuck around to go to gym like, I think, I think I'm just going to, have to go twice a week is my plan. I mean, if anybody has any tips on how I should do my... You know what, what, I, you know what I reckon I'm going to do? I'm going to go to gym when I'm home twice a week. And then when I'm on tour, I should just do a workout like with a, a body weight workout. I reckon I'm going to do that. If anyone can recommend some good body weight workouts, that'd be great. Uh, <clears throat> that, I would really appreciate that. So this, this Airbnb that we're in, it's so Tasmanian, man. There's like Tasmanian shit everywhere. It's very nature. And there's art all over the walls. I'm just walking around the house now. I love recording the podcast on my phone because I can just walk around and fucking ramble like a psycho. But there's art all over the walls. And it's, some of it's for sale, but for ridiculous prices. Like there's this one. It's, it's like, it's a shit picture of bushes and the sea and it won the tas oh shit it says it won the tasmanian art award in 2014 so fucking hell you know there's not many painters in tasmania because this is average as it's not a bad painting but it's average as fuck and they want you to pay 460 dollars for it i wouldn't hang that up in my house for free what else do we have here we've got Oh, that one's actually pretty nice. It's like a landscape with lots of different colors in it. It's the beach. How much is it? $750. You're fucking dreaming, mate. You know, I've always thought with these paintings, I reckon you could photocopy it, take it down to Officeworks, photocopy it, and then put your photocopy in the frame and then take the picture home and they wouldn't notice. I bet they wouldn't notice. They wouldn't notice for like a month and then you could probably... Blame the latest guest. They would. That's what I reckon. Maybe I should do that. Nah, I'm not going to steal shit. <laughs> so when I was uh, in Melbourne, um, went to a cafe. Well, I talk about cafes too much. I don't have anything else to do during the day. I write my fucking videos. I film them. And then I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do all day? And I need, I've, I've, reached, I've reached this point where I can't write at home anymore. I need to move out. That's what I want to do. I, I hope I can move out after this tour because I'm so... I've reached the point where I'm, I'm actually sick of home. I never used to be sick of living at home. I think it's the, the, the area. Like, I've, I've lived there my whole life. Like, it was the second place that I went. The first place was my dad's ball sack. And then it was into mum. All right, and then it was home. And it was my third place. And I've been in the same bedroom since I was nothing. I'm 23 now. I need to... I just... I'm just sick of the area. I'm sick of looking at everything. Everything's the same. I need to get out there and experience the world. I think I want to move out after this tour. Please come so I can. <laughs> but um, there's this cafe in my area that, that nobody ever went to. It was run by um, a group of uh, Arabic people. And uh, the cafe, all the food was nice. But it was just that sitting inside it, it was really dark and shit. And, and, and Arab people loved it. But white people hated it, and unfortunately, they lived in a white area. So, I noticed, like, when I got home, they completely renovated it, and it, and it's just a white person's paradise now. Like, there's wide open spaces, there's natural light everywhere, and they've just completely 
You can tell they've gone, you know what? Fuck our original design. It's time to make some money. And they've just completely white peopled it up. It's like they looked looked at a, a whole bunch of white girls' Instagrams and, and had a look at what they were posting. And, and they've just done... Yeah, it's, it's what they've done is they've done a white girl magnet for their cafe, right? Everything's like like vintage wood paneling and, and contrasting white and black colors. And you know what? It's worked. The food is still crap. The coffee is still shithouse. But there's white people infesting that place and it just made me feel so ashamed. <laughs> it's like, really? They still make shit food. But you're only in there so you can take photos with fucking Instagram. It's crazy. It's weird how that shit works. Like, you, every now and then you, you have this moment where you'll see a, a human do something amazing. And you'll be like, you know what? We're just the greatest creatures on earth. And then, so much more often than that, you'll see shit like... Some shithouse cafe added natural light, so immediately that changed all of our perceptions of it. And it, and and the, the fact that advertising works. Why does advertising work? You you know what you're watching is a fucking ad, and it still works. It's like when whenever anyone's looking for fucking energy bills, they go with who they see on TV. It's like, are you retarded? Look, go with whoever's cheaper. You're all getting it from the same fucking generator. It's all coming from some dam or however the fuck it works. Some dude installed a dam, destroyed a whole ecosystem, and then goes, I own electricity now, give me money. And then 30 different electricity companies come to him. And basically all an electricity company is is just a, a, a fucking accountant where they charge the customer... And then they take their cut, and then they char- and then they fucking get electricity from the dam. At the end of the day, no matter who your provider is, you're all getting the fucking electricity from some rich cunt who runs a dam. It's not Energy Australia. It's not. I don't know the fucking brands. It's all horseshit. That's what I'm saying. We're, ju- we're not very intelligent. This is such a rambly podcast. I'm so fucking tired, guys. I'm sorry. I apologize for this one. But you know what? I had a good week. You know why? Because my barber's back, finally. Do you guys remember a couple podcasts ago when I was raging? Absolutely ranting and raving about one chick who cut my hair and and just ruined it? Well, my regular barber finally came back from holidays. And he's just the best. He's just the best. I was sitting in the chair and we went through... We had, we had a conversation about how to cut my hair for fucking two minutes. Two minutes! And he didn't snip anything. He was like, okay, so you want to have a fade here? And I was like, no, I was thinking maybe here. And he was like, oh, that'd be good. And then we could do this at the back. And then that would look good because this. And when you're on stage, this and that. And I was like, yes, you understand me, dude. He's just the best. It's the best shit ever. Men never get that stuff. Go to a good barber. You have to experience it. It's amazing. And then I was sitting in the chair. And, he, and before he cut the hair, he was like, hey, man, just confirming before I do this that this is what we agreed to do. Is that right? And I was like, you know what, mate? That is right. You can, you, you can go ahead and you can fucking snip that, those hairs, mate. You've earned it. You're the best, mate. And then he did. It was just great. I swear to God, if he ever goes on holidays again, I'm going to fucking kidnap the cunt and put him in my basement. Cut my hair, mate. <laughs> You're the only one who does it how I like it. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired. I'm gonna. Do, I'm. I'm excited for this show, though. It's really. I'm. I'm really feeling the tour is underway. I'm on a roll. I'm very prepared to do this shit after the show. Oh, this is what I'm excited for as well. Because um, my friend, uh, my mate Greeley, he's a rapper. Check him out if you don't know him. Um, he's coming to the Tassie show because he's a Tassie local, and uh, he's organised that after my show, we're both going to go to a bush doof. And you know, right, everybody knows that a bush doof is loose. But I guarantee you a Tasmanian bush doof is 10 times fucking looser. Because first of all, everybody there is from Tasmania. There's nothing to do here but fuck your cousin and get loose. But they're doing that at a bush doof. I'm very excited. So we're thinking we might film some Ping of Pete stuff at the Bush Doof. I don't know. I'm, I've, I've, I want to do a lot more in-person stuff. I want to do some Vox Pops. Go go to places and just interview people. 
try that out, see how that goes. I think I can do it well. Not 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 any prank shit though. More like just interviewing people with it with a like like you would see on any kind of American talk show, all of those comedy talk shows and shit. Chase's War and everything. They did it a lot. I want to get into doing that once the tour is finished because I'm bringing bi monthly bull back. So I want to learn how to kind of basically all you are is baiting somebody with the conversation to end up at your punchline. That's the idea. So if if you wanted someone. I don't know, basically, if you were trying to get somebody to say red, you would go, hey, what color is a fire truck? And you know, 70% of the time, someone's going to say red. And if if they don't say red, you just ask a thousand other people until you get what you want. And that's how you kind of make funny Vox Pops. I assume. I don't know what I'm talking about, really. But yeah, I'm very excited for this bush stuff. And then um, tomorrow, because I'm staying here for a few days, then tomorrow, I think... I'm actually going to be doing a spot. I'm going to get up and perform at this bush doof, which is just going to be nuts because it's Sunday, 12 p.m., after they've already been partying from Friday morning and Saturday morning and night, and then it's Sunday, 12 p.m., and then I'm going to get up and tell some jokes. I don't think anybody will have the brain capacity to keep up with a fucking joke by that time. Like, you know, already they're Tasmanian, so you have to be really slow. But add to that, they've been peeing off their head for three fucking days at a bush doof with no sleep. I don't think I'm going to go very well at all. I think I'm going to tank the whole way through, but I'm almost excited to do that. (laughs) Sorry for ragging on you, Tasmanian. It is too easy, I know. I only made one fucking cousin joke, so you should be proud of me for that. I bet you guys are sick of that, those fucking jokes. Oh, and I wanted to say that I have um, drawn myself up a content schedule for when I'm on tour. So, it's looking like, not this week, but from the the next... Basically, the tour vlog thing will encompass four shows per episode. So, that should come out every two weeks. The first one of that episode should come out two weeks from now, because we need to have Geelong... Ballarat, Hobart, and then Newcastle in it. So Newcastle isn't until next week. So the tour vlog should hopefully be the Tuesday after that. But in the meantime, I've got a lure review coming out on Tuesday. Um, it's all filmed. I just didn't have a, I didn't have a chance to edit it. I filmed it all on Thursday, and I finished filming at like 3 p.m. And I, I just didn't have time to edit and get it up at. Thursday night, and then I was like, well, fuck, I can't put it up on Friday, because nobody wants to, nobody wants to watch anything on Friday or Saturday, so I just figured it'd be, be better to delay it, and I don't get home to Melbourne until Tuesday, so if I put it up on Friday night, and then I got home on Tuesday, I wouldn't have time to film and release another one, and then I would just be stuck in this loop of releasing videos on Friday, so I figured it's just better to delay it a couple of days, <clears throat> so I'm going to edit that one tomorrow. Uh, which is Sunday, Um, so today I'm going to edit that one on Sunday, and um, I'll put it up super early for the Patreon supporters, you guys will get it like at least, at least an entire day before it's done, Um, but keep an eye out on the, on the opening sketch when I do the Pig or Pete sketch, I'm doing one in this video, I noticed on the flight over as I started to edit it, that the, the initial shot of Pig or Pete my responses to Pete all recorded properly, but Pinger Pete's voice was not audio recorded. So I'm going to have to, I brought the Pinger Pete fucking costume with me to Tassie and I'm going to have to record Pinger Pete's part here in Hobart and it'll be a completely different room, but that's just how I'm going to have to do it. Although actually maybe I could refilm my responses. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it looks, but you guys will spot it now that I've told you the Ping or Pete sketch. Either half of it or all of it will be filmed in an entirely different state. <laughs> Not in my room. Um, and yeah, speaking of, if you would like to support the podcast, the, the videos, uh, articles, everything that I do, um, jump on Patreon. You get early access to everything. I've got a Facebook group and a group chat that I'm in every day. Uh, with all the legends supporting me on there. Um, And you get cool rewards, like you get merchandise before everybody else. But speaking of, if you're a Patreon supporter, I'm going to send out the posters 
that you're entitled to next week. So you guys will get it before everybody else. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it. If you want to support the show, help help me buy food and uh, pay for flights, support me on Patreon. All right. Let's get into miscellaneous bit at the end, all right? I'm sorry, guys, but we do have to do it, right? Let's get into this bit. I've got two good ones for you. Okay. This one is an update email from a while ago. Uh, it's from a couple of podcasts ago, a few months back. I'm uh, not too sure of what episode I did this in, but... Ah, uh, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do three questions because I like this one too. Sorry, guys. All right. So this first one is an update about a question that I answered a while back. It was a guy who was bisexual, wanted to tell his dad that he was bisexual and his dad he suspected was a massive homophobe. So he wanted my advice and I just told him, uh, I can't really remember what I told him, but he, but this guy reckons it was good advice. So it was probably something like, ah, just be honest. What else are you going to do? <clears throat> I think my advice was go and do a manly thing with him, like fucking, I don't know, bowling or chopping wood. And then after chopping wood and you've had a great time together, just go, hey dad, I'm bisexual, right? I think that was my advice. All right. Hey cunt, Michael here. A few months ago, you answered my email about telling my dad that I'm bisexual. And thankfully, I made it all the way through to the end to act on your genuinely top advice. Awesome. A few months passed and nothing changed between us. Just a few shit jokes every now and then. No big deal. I thought that everything was sound and I could focus more on studying for exams and resisting the urge to kill myself every Monday morning when I listen to the miscellaneous bit at the end. But recently, shit got real. I came home from school to an immediate barrage of hate from my dad, shouting homophobic shit in my face, calling me some pretty Nazi, nasty neo-Nazi Westboro ass shit. That sucks. We got into a very heated argument and keeping in a very English stereotype, we're both very prone to fisticuffs, so I was convinced I was going to have to fight my dad in the living room. But luckily, I have very little patience for raging bigots like him, so I took some of my shit wallet, phone, etc. And I got on a bus into the city center and took some photos as that's what relaxes me. And it was also as far as I could get away from him for, for a while. Fast forward a couple of weeks and we haven't said a word to each other. He's completely avoided me since. And there's obviously a fuck ton of tension between everyone. And I'm worried that I'll be blamed for it all and pushed out of the family by him. I just wanted to give you a late update on the whole situation and whether or not you had any wisdom to share. Uh, thanks again, you're a sick cunt, and good luck on tour. Hope it all goes according to plan. Now I've got an okay job, I can finally help keep you on your feet and donate to your Patreon as I can't see you live yet because you're on the other side of the bloody world. Have a good one. Thank you very much, Michael. I really appreciate the support, bro. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to make it to England at some point in my career. Give me a couple of years, I'll make it there. It's definitely a goal of mine. Oh, look, man, I don't really know. Um, this is a very shit situation. Um, yeah, it's obvious. Obviously, he's done... You know what he's done? Your dad has done the classic male thing of, I can't deal with my emotions. So when you told him, right, you thought it went well, but inside his head, it was probably not going well. And he was just like, I can't deal with all of the homophobic anger that I have in my head. I'm just going to say nothing. And then a few months after that, it just exploded out of him and came and, and a whole a whole month of ah, don't suck dick, son, just came out in the form of hatred. I don't know, man, like it's, it's a really tough thing that you're dealing with. It's like your dad's a homophobe and 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 you're 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 into penis. I think the important thing to um, to note is that you have done nothing wrong. Like it, you're just you, you know, you can't really, you can't change who you like, you know, if you're into pussy and, and penis, more power to you, right? You, you probably got double the chance of getting laid. I wish I was like that really, you know, wait, one day I could be like, you know, Friday night, I'm going to fuck dudes and Saturday night. It's all about puss, <laughs> right? And you could switch it up. But, um, 
Yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like, it's such a hard situation because obviously you live at home, you're still going to school, it's not like you can move out. I think the only thing you need to do is... Uh, obviously, it sounds like your dad's important to you. I think you just need to... You just need to keep talking to him, really. Because clearly he is just not used to the idea and he doesn't understand it. Like, like, all that kind of fucking homophobic shit comes from a place of ignorance. Like, they don't understand it. They think it's bad for whatever reason because... Because they think it's bad for themselves personally, you know? Like, I think there's, there's, there's always that element of, Ugh, yuck! I don't like that. Why would you? With anything. Anything like... It's, it, people are like that with food. Ugh, how can you eat that? It's gross! Except, you know, it's, it's like... I don't know. I think the only thing you can really do, man, is, is keep trying to talk to him. Maybe ask your mum for advice. You haven't really mentioned your mum or the rest of your family, maybe you should, t- <laughs> you know, you know what I did when, when jazz, this is like a much less extreme example, but when my girlfriend's dad didn't like me, I just tried to make friends with the rest of the family. And then that kind of brought him around because everyone was like, well, look, he's a bit of an asshole, but he's all right as well. So I think if you get the, if you get the mum on board, your mum on board and Get, get her to talk to him for you or your siblings if you have any. Um, and yeah, you just can't... You can't walk around for weeks not speaking to each other because that's no good. So I think you're just going to have to bite the bullet and just talk to him and just... I don't know. Lay out your feelings and let him know. There's probably a lot of other people that you go to advice. Maybe talk to some older gay dudes. But don't let him fuck you. <laughs> because you know that's what they're thinking. I don't know, bro. I, 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 I think, I've, I, I think I've, we've reached the limit of my potential. I haven't experienced this. I haven't gone through it. I, I'm only 23. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying or doing in this world. I don't know what I would do. If it was me, I would just try and talk to him again. I would get the rest of the family on board with who you are. And, and just make it pretty clear that he's being very unreasonable. Like, if you, get the, if you get the rest of the family on your side, he will quickly realize himself that he's being ridiculous. Um, and that's, that's all I can really say, man. Um, I'm sure there's a few hotlines in, in England that you can call that are probably specifically set up for gay people. And you can call them. They probably give you a lot more advice than I could. But um, best of luck, man. Uh, I would say let me know how that goes, but I didn't really tell you anything. So, yeah, sorry, bro. I wish I could help you more, but I I just don't have anything. (laughs) Good luck. Um, All right, next one. G'day, cunt. I love your work. Thank you. Just wondering if you give me some shit life advice. Mate, that's what I'm all about. I love a bit of shit life advice. Oh, this is a good one, alright? You remember last week's one about the the son who fucked his mum's friend? Well, do you remember how I was saying that's basically like your mum? So, okay, so last week, a guy had sex with his mother's friend. And I was like, you're a shit son, because basically the equivalent of that would be if your mum fucked one of your close friends. And boy, do I have a fucking email today. I think my mum and my best friend are sleeping together. Oh, fuck, this is awful. My name is Luke, and my friend's name is Jason. Jason and I have been best friends since year seven. We're both 19 now and my mum is turning 40. Yuck. We, we live in Sydney. So anyway, it all started in mid-January when Jason was having trouble at his house. So I said to him he could stay with us until shit was sorted. My mum and I pay half of the weekly rent. So I said it was cool. Dude, you pay half the rent in your house? That's crazy. I don't do that. <laughs> I'm a chef, so I work nights and weekends, whereas my mum and Jason both work tradie hours, so they're both home alone while I'm at work. Oh, no. So after about four weeks of Jason staying with us, I notice that they've start, been starting to get closer. They've been holding hands while watching TV and even Jason sleeping in mum's bed. Oh, that's so not on. 
Dude, your, your mate is staying at your house. You've done a favour to your friend because he's been having a shit time at his house and to repay you, he starts ploughing your mother. <laughs> Dude. I don't know how you're not... I, I, are you sending me this email from a jail cell? Because fucking hell, I don't know what I would do. You're helping out your friend and in return he fucks your mother and holds hands with her in front of you. Dude. I just want to let you know that they have not been sleeping in your bed. Fuck, that's horrible, dude. About a week ago, I calmly confronted Jason. How? How were you calm? I calmly confronted Jason and I said to him, I feel it's inappropriate and uncomfortable how close you're getting with my mum. Dude, you're, you are a master of patience. I don't know how you have responded this level-headed. Because I would definitely... I, don't th I think most people would definitely not respond in that way at all. He agreed and said he would stop. I then spoke to my mother while we were driving to pick up Jason from work and said the same thing. I feel it is inappropriate and uncomfortable how close you're getting with Jason. <laughs> she went so fucking psycho on me and punched me in the face once and the back of the head twice. Wow. Started going on about how she's given everything up for me and how ugly she is and how she hates herself. Ah, oh, that's fucked. After we, we got home after a very uncomfortable drive back, my mum, my mum asked me to move out of our rental property when we got home. Fuck. Wait, hang on a second. So, so, <laughs> this is fucked, bro. You invited your friend to stay with you because he has a shit home life. He fucks your mum and then your mum asks you to move out. That's horrible, bro. I don't know what I would do, dude. As if they're as if they're still alive. I'm not advocating murder. Just just saying, don't do that. But I I I don't know what I would do. The day the day after everything had seemed to die down, I apologized to her and hoped that was the end. Why would you apologize? I don't understand these people. Fast forward a week ahead to now, that lovey dovey behavior has not stopped. It's been driving me crazy. I got too suspicious, so last night I went through Jason's phone and found some shit. Dude, why do you even have to go through his phone? He's sleeping in your mother's bed. Uh, that's evidence enough. He's been bending her over in your childhood home. That's fucked. My mum has been messaging Jason some sexual messages like, Fuck, I want to eat you. You got me here playing with myself thinking of you, and I don't want to shower because it will wash off your smell. Yuck. Bro, that's gross. After I read that, I immediately went up to my room and had a full-on panic attack. Yeah, so would I. I've been so angry and stressed over the last 24 hours. What should I do? Should I just leave it alone and do my own thing? Or should I lay down the law on both of them and say the shit's not on? Please help, Lewis. Love you, stuff. Can't wait for the Sydney show. Thanks. Have a shit one. <laughs> what was your name? Um... All right, so you are Luke and your mate is Jason. All right, Luke, you need to fucking kick Jason out of your house. You're paying half of the rent. I assume your name is on the lease. Kick that cunt out of the house. You need to sit... This is. Don't even talk to your mother. You have got a shit fucking friend. You need to say, hey, Jason, do you remember how you were having a terrible time at home and I gave you a place to stay until it got better? Well, now I'm having a terrible time at home because you're fucking my mother. <laughs> you need to kick him out of the house, man. You can't have that. That's fucked. You need, to kick, you need to kick him out of the house. He is a terrible friend. He is an awful fucking person. And your mother has horrible judgment. I... I that you you are you have definitely done the right thing. You are not wrong in any way. How you're feeling is to totally right. They are being selfish assholes. The, you can't fucking do that, right? Your mum can't fuck your friend's son. Wait, your son's friend. A mother can't fuck their son's friend, and a friend can't fuck their m friend's mother. That's just horrible. And I hope the guy who, who fucked his mum's friend from last week is listening to this because this is how your mum feels, all right? This guy 
who we're speaking about now, this is how your mother feels. <laughs> yeah, Luke, uh, you, uh, honestly, man, what I would do is I would absolutely lay down the law with Jason and completely excommunicate him and say, if you ever come near my mother again, you're, I, you can't do that. You just can't. It's not worth going to jail. I would, yeah, you just got to tell him, do not see my mother ever again. You are not my friend anymore. And I want you to know you're a terrible person. And then you need to make sure that he will never come to your house again because you're paying half the rent. You're completely within your right to uh, do that. If they can't stop seeing each other, at least you know your mate won't be fucking her while you're at work. Right? At least you know he's not going to be bending her over in your bedroom while you're cooking a salad or whatever you do. Okay? So you need to lay down the law and you need to, at the very least, if you can't stop this relationship, because you can't control people, you need to make sure that it does not happen in your house. That is just as much your house as it is your mother's because you're paying half. I realize that she's your mum, but you're paying half the rent. It doesn't matter if, if, if she was a stranger, right? It doesn't matter who the fuck she is. You, you make half the rules and you can totally bar somebody from coming into a house. That's reasonable. And then you need to sit down with your mother and you need to explain, Hey, you know how you're fucking my friend? Have you ever considered how that would make me feel? You selfish cunt. <laughs> Don't, don't be mean about it, but you need to sit her down and be like, what are you doing with your life? My friend, really? My mate? He's 19 for one. And second, he's my friend! <laughs> you just, yeah, it's, you can't have that, man. I, that's all I, you just gotta, you gotta have to sit them both down separately. And then you need to, you need to ban Jason from the house and you need to talk to your mum and say, Hey, uh, we're not letting Jason come over anymore. And I need you to stop this relationship because it's making me hate you. And if you can't stop this relationship, then you need to do it. Not here, right? You're a 40 year old woman. I'm sure you can afford a hotel. Go get your back blown out there. Not here. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. If I didn't, if I didn't make it funny, everyone listening would be crying. Yeah, that's, that's my honest advice is you need to talk to them separately. You need to ban Jason from the house and you need to, you need to do your best to ask both of them, please stop. You need to stop this. And, and if, if that fails, honestly, if that fails, I would pull the ultimatum on my mum and be like, look, it's Jason or it's me. You have until next week to decide. If you pick him, I am moving out and I'm not going to talk to you for a very, very long time. And if she picks Jason, that's what you do. You move out, you find a new place and you don't talk to her for a very, very long time. Never, never talk to your mum. You can't ever do that. Don't excommunicate your parents permanently, but just let her know at least... At least three months. Just don't talk to her for three months. Because to a mum, that feels like forever. That's what I would do. I'd be like, hey mum, so because you keep on a fucking my mate, I'm moving out and I'm not going to talk to you. I'd change my number. I wouldn't tell her where I'm moving to. I would um, make sure that work doesn't let her speak to me or call. And uh, that's what I would do. For three months. And then I'd call back and be like, hey. Hey mum, how you going? And she'd be like, oh my god. And I'll be like, hey, are you still fucking me, mate? She'll be like, oh, yep. Yeah. I'll be like, all right, see ya. And you call her back in three months. That's what I would do. But yeah, you need to, if, if you can't stop, if they, well, it's not you, you can't stop anything, really. It's not in your control. If they refuse to, that's because that's what it is. They are choosing not to stop a relationship that hurts you. If they won't stop it, you need to leave. Let me know how it goes. I really want an update with this one, man. I would love an update. Let me know how that goes um, or if any other developments happen. I'd love to read it out on another podcast. Um, best of luck to you, man, because that is... <laughs> that's horrible. I wouldn't know... I wouldn't know how, what I would do in this situation. All right, guys. Uh, that wraps up miscellaneous bit at the end. Um, oh, it was a little bit of a short one. Oh, it's not that short, really. It's only like fucking... 
I don't know. I'll go for a little bit longer. Yeah, thanks for listening, guys. I really appreciate you guys tuning in every week. Um, I just need to start getting ready for the Hobart show, uh, which is in... I've got to be there in like half an hour or so. So, I, yeah, I need to wrap this up, guys. Um, thank you very much for listening. Thanks for your patience while I'm on tour with my content, creating all, all the videos. I got two videos out last week, though, but they were second channel videos. I'm going to get Lou Reviews out. Um, Tuesday will be the next one or early if you're a Patreon supporter. And then from that video, it should be one probably two videos a week until the tour is over. That's what I'm planning for anyway. Um, but it will be at least one every week. And I, it's looking like two. Two videos a week for most weeks while I'm on tour is what it's looking like. So yeah, um, thank you very much for listening to the podcast. Support me on Patreon if you want to catch all the episodes early and all the videos early. And uh, that's all I got to say. I will let you know how the Hobart show goes when I speak to you next, uh, which will I'm probably going to record it on Thursday. I think, yeah, I'll record it on Thursday. I'll let you know how it all goes. So, yeah, if you're on Patreon, I'll speak to you on Thursday. But if you are anybody else, I'll speak to you on Sunday. Thanks very much for listening, guys. Have a shit.